Hello everyone, welcome to the OpenMP SC22 Boot Talk series. This presentation is from the Solve Validation and Verification team, and we will talk about our uh, validation and verification suite and the latest developments therein. Um, I am Swarup Pofle from Oak Ridge National Lab. I'm a computer scientist, and uh, this talk will be uh, co-presented by Thomas Huber, who is a recent graduate from University of Delaware. So a bit about the overall project. Uh, the SOLVE uh, project it deals with OpenMP, uh, development of OpenMP uh, in LLVM. Though this is uh, specifically for LLVM, there are different moving paths here. There, there are different teams across different organizations working on uh, runtime, the compiler, uh, tools, and uh, the validation and verification suite. Our part of the project is slightly different from the rest because we are not focusing on LLVM per se. We are a way of providing implementation agnostic testing framework that can uh, compare not only the development in LLVM, but across other compilers as well. So the team members, uh, we have a collaboration with, uh, where, uh, between Oak Ridge National Laboratory and the University of Delaware, where we work with uh, students uh, from uh, in Sunita Chandrasekharan's group, who is also the PI for SOLVE, and uh, develop feature tests that we will uh, talk about. So what is the OpenMP Validation Verification Suite? Like I touched on before, it is an implementation agnostic set of tests that uh, try to focus on the new features that are uh, introduced in every new OpenMP specifications. We try to focus on the directives, uh, the different constructs, uh, all the runtime calls, and combinations of directives of different clauses. Uh, that said, we try to keep the tests uh, uh, self-contained uh, without relying on too many other features so that it is uh, easier for debugging purposes. Why, do we, why are we building this test suite? We want uh, there are three benefits of it. First up, to evaluate uh, OpenMP readiness across the distant, different systems, uh, especially the ECP systems, Frontier and uh, Summit, and going forward, Aurora as well. How are the compilers faring? How, what is the progress in the OpenMP implementations out there? We also help the compiler developers. We have uh, different vendors regularly testing our test suite to make sure that um, the tests are passing, there are no regressions, and they, are, they, are, they have better pass rate every time. Uh, in terms of application developers, these, these tests are small self-contained codes. So if someone wants to use a new feature in OpenMP, this test is like the bare minimum. They can, you, they can look at the test and see how it is used. There is OpenMP uh, examples document, which is a more official source uh, backed by the ARB, but it is not exhaustive. It is not meant to be exhaustive. Is it? it is an excellent resource, but not exhaustive. And we do uh, more coverage that the applications would potentially need in terms of features. So since our last talk, uh, OpenMP specification 5.2 is out as of uh, November 2021. And uh, though it is not um, heavy with new features, they introduce a lot of Fortran specific features, which in some way or form already exist for C and C++, such as meta directives, assumption directives, nothing directive, error directive, and loop transformation constructs for pure procedures. Again, we have allocators and dispatch constructs, and uh, there is also a bit of uh, behavior changes uh, that have been introduced. Uh, these are the links to uh, the implementation status across different compilers that we are tracking. So when we are writing tests for a particular feature, we we pick when we pick a feature, we are first we first grade those features according to what is important for the uh, for the application developers. Now this is a whole process that goes across uh, polling across different labs and different applications, ECP as well as uh, 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 from our car portfolio and find out which features are important to them, which features they are looking forward to using. And we create a priority list. When we uh, then when we pick up the highest priority and try to have more coverage of these tests, 
if it is just a matter of having a new variation in the behavior, then obviously we have something that uh, uh, a baseline test that we have written before and we just modify it. Otherwise, we try to create a brand new example, uh, trying to uh, trying to capture the correct usage of the feature. We have an internal review process after which we push our test to our uh, 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 GitHub repo and uh, it is open and available uh, for everyone, and we have had a lot of uh, conversations uh, back and forth where we, uh, with uh, vendors, with other implementers, uh, where people come up with issues or they come up with requests for us. Uh, now I will be transferring control to Tom. All right, so as Swarup mentioned, my name is Thomas Huber. I'm a recent graduate on the University of Delaware side of this team. Um, and now that we kind of talked about our workflow for writing tests and why we're doing it, I'm going to go ahead and tell you how you can go about running our test suite and actually making some use out of our work and our unit test. So, first thing you want to do, go ahead and clone our repository, GitHub links provided here, and it's uh, posted as a subdirectory of the solve project. Second thing you want to do is make sure your environment's set up properly. So. If you're on a supercomputer, you might be able to use the module feature and load your compilers and your accelerator support, whether that be CUDA for NVIDIA or Rockham for AMD devices, and or just install and source your path to the compilers you're interested in if you're not on a supercomputer. So after you've done that, you can go ahead and use our make commands to compile and run a single test or the whole test suite or a subset. And I'll kind of walk through this uh, command line example right here. So for a single test, you want to specify your C, C++, or Fortran compilers, depending on what type of test you're going to be running. I would recommend having these verbose and log options on as they'll provide additional uh, information when it comes to generating a report at the end of running our test suite. We also have a few systems that we have definition files that you might find of use, for example, the summit system, or some of the pre-frontier systems, uh, as well as you can specify a device type, either NVIDIA or AMD, which proves helpful when you come to a case where you have a system that supports both devices. And under the hood, our make file has all of the most up-to-date commands, so it might not be bad to check this out if you're curious about what uh, flags you should be using for OpenMP enablement and for OpenMP offloading. And then finally, you have this OpenMP version, which specify, uh, defaults to 4.5, but I would recommend setting it to whatever version you're looking to run. And if you're looking for a specific feature in 5.1, you have to have that 5.1 set. So same thing for running the entire suite, except you just swap your sources with, instead of the name of the test you're looking to run, just a, a wildcard there. Or if you're interested in running a subset, for example, you want to run all of the target private tests, you could do target underscore private and then a wildcard provided. So, so far we test somewhat of a wide array of compilers. We test the AMD Clang, AMD Clang++, plus plus, uh, Rockham compilers as well. We do the whole uh, fleet of GCC, G++, G Fortran, the Craig CCE compilers, IBM on Summit, uh, LLVM, the development and upstream version, as well as the NVIDIA HPC compiler. And the systems that we test them on, as you can see, we do Summit at Oak Ridge National Lab, Perlmutter at NERSC, Spock at uh, Oak Ridge as well. We test LLVM and GCC across all these systems, NVIDIA on the systems that have NVIDIA hardware, AMD on the systems with AMD accelerators, and then IBM and Cray on the respective CPU architecture that that system has. So once you've kind of run the test suite, you can get some useful uh, information out of our built-in reporting features as well that could easily be included in your weekly or nightly runs if you're doing development on OpenMP or have some applications where you're curious if these features are gonna pass or fail. So after you've run our test suite, it's as simple as just running make report JSON and this will generate a nice JSON file that has all of this logging information if you enable those flags I was talking about earlier. You can easily consume this for view in spreadsheets or if you're using like Elasticstack or something. And you could also just use our make report summary, which will just give you a nice straightforward 
contextual percentage of how your performance is doing overall with respect to these these unit test pass and fails. So uh, last time we gave this talk, we talked a little bit about four or five. We've kind of moved on, so we are almost uh, completely done with our 5.0 uh, coverage. We have 258 tests, 100% coverage for C, C++, and 100% meaning we have a test for each new addition or, or uh, deprecation to the specification, and at least one corner case covered for each of those additions. We start out by writing all of the C uh, tests first traditionally, and then we'll go back and do the Fortran tests after. So for OpenMP 5.1, we're almost totally done with the C tests. This was a smaller specification release than 5.0, so there's not as many tests we need to create. Uh, and as you can see, we're kind of catching up with the Fortran coverage there as well. And then for OpenMP 5.2, we have six tests so far with 20% overall coverage. Um, and as Swarup mentioned earlier, our test creation is generally based on the needs of application developers first. And then after that, we'll look at some low hanging fruit where it's just the tests that compiler developers have implemented first. And then we'll go through and just pick up anything, even if it's not implemented, we'll still target writing tests for those cases. Here's some uh, new results that we recently co uh, collected you might find a bit interesting. Here we were just curious about how uh, support for OpenMP has grown over time for all of these specific compilers. So on the left, you can see we have the NVIDIA HPC suite with just OpenMP 5.0 data. And again, we want to show the progression from their 21.7 release to their 21.11 and just kind of give you a visual depiction of the fact that they are actively developing. You can see there's four more tests that that pass throughout. Granted, this isn't a big time span as compared to the GCC graph you see on your right, where we're comparing 9.3 all the way to their 11.1 release. You can, this might be a little bit more interesting to look at GCC's progression over time. As you can see, they have 60 more tests that are passes, passing. They've been doing tons of development throughout these versions. So if you're interested in using any of the 5.0 features, you clearly wanna go for one of these newer versions and if you are using one of these older versions, this might clue you in as per why your feature might not be functioning properly or might be giving you some compilation errors. Recently, we've had some good uh, community interaction in the past year. We had one test case that was actually a slip up on our end. We were incorrectly using a runtime call where we shouldn't have. And this led to a patch in GCC because uh, GCC themselves also wasn't checking for the fact that you shouldn't be using these runtime calls in the target region. Um, we had another test that led for or led to an inclusion in or a redefinition of language in the OpenMP 6.0 specification, which is still pending on their uh, GitHub. And then we had one test that led to an actual description change in the third private directive, which is uh, enacted already. And then additionally, the OpenMP official examples document, which is something we referenced, has also adapted one of our test cases for use in their document. So thank you for listening to our chats. Uh, if you're interested in collaborating using our test suite, if you have some test cases you want to contribute, or are just curious about how you could run the suite and incorporate it in your, your weekly CI pipelines or whatever uh, you're interested in doing, please reach out to us on GitHub. Any of the members that you see commonly interacting would be glad to chat with you through our issues, PRs, or you can send us emails as well, which are listed out on our, on our readme and on our site there. So lastly, just wanna thank uh, US Department of Energy and the Exascale Computing Project for funding this work. And thank you so much for uh, listening in and coming to our talk. Thank you.